I think I was about 27, and I wrote it as a short film, just as a three-page short. Um, it was just kind of the basic sci-fi idea of it. Um, and then it, it sat in a drawer until after we made The Brothers Bloom, and Rom actually um, really liked the short and always kept asking <laughs> me about Where it. Where is it? Yeah. He actually went and pitched the idea to Looper of Looper to a bunch of studios, and they all actually, the first offer that we got was actually on Looper. People wanted to buy the movie, but we said, no, we're n this is not the movie you should do now. You should go do Bloom. So Thank uh, goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter what the budget, you always have challenges or limitations. So I think Ryan thrives on the fact that he knows what he has to work with, and then he figures out a way how to how to do it. So we are very, uh, I think all of us, we're very uh, conscious of what movie cost, and we always wanted to make movies for the right amount of money. We want, you know, we kind of figure out ahead of, ahead of, you know, ahead of time what the value of the movie is internationally or domestically, and we go in, we back into that number and we figure out, okay, how can we make that movie that Ryan is envisioning for a certain amount of money? Joe and I are, are We've become really, really good friends since we made Brick. And Joe, um, it's just a really unique situation where Joe is, uh, uh, he's a filmmaker himself. And, and our collaboration is much different than the typical director-actor collaboration. It really does feel like two, collabor two filmmakers collaborating um, because he just knows the whole process. And he brings that knowledge to his, uh, you know, to his performance on set, he realizes he's giving you pieces to put together into an editing room. He's very aware of that, and so he's very aware of the technical end of it. Um, and so, you know, he still needs everything he needs as an actor, and it's still about making, really feeling the moments and making them real. At the same time, he's, uh, he, he has that filmmaking knowledge. Yes. You know, so often you think you have to, and very often you have to, kind of quote unquote trick kids into giving uh, performance. And that was just not the case w uh, with Pierce. Pierce Gagnon is the name of the actor. And uh, he, he, he would act. He would sit down and he would be in the scene. He would be listening to the other actor and responding to them. And um, if there was something that felt off, you would, you, kn you, know, you would give him a note and he would execute that note partway in the scene <laughs> and do the rest. It was ridiculous. But I should say also, uh, in case everyone's, everyone's worried, he also has a tremendous mother and he's a totally normal five-year-old <laughs> kid. You know, I, I certainly thought we, you know, we we needed somebody that just was older to handle this, you know, this um, the amount of dialogue you had, and the right. kid was amazing. Well, the most challenging part is definitely the writing. Writing sucks. Writing is not fun. <laughs> writing is just, you know, the toughest part, and you're alone, and you're just, you know, sitting in a room trying to make this thing work, wondering if it's ever going to work, and and uh, and so that's definitely the the toughest part. I, I liked it when you told me that you like to have written. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like writing. I like having written. It's like you know you, you're trying, but once you have written, once you've rage hit that idea or you've got that thing or it clicks, you have the finished script and you feel like this is the movie. You know, there's nothing better than it in the world. So it's both the worst part and the best part. But uh, you know, it's been uh, said much more articulately than I could say it that, that the writing process continues all the way through the end of the editing process and. Um, I would say in many ways, you're finding the movie all the way through, but it's really in the editing room that you, you truly find the movie. And that's where you also, I, in, in my and I, this is only my third film, I'm still starting out and, and figuring it out, but in my limited experience, you know, one thing I've really found is that it's, uh, it, it, it's also the point where you have to m let go of your ego the most. And, um, you know, you have to let go of what your preconception was, especially as a writer-director, uh, the movie that you had in your head. And you really have to find what your footage wants to be. You have to find the movie that it wants to be. And it will, it'll show you that if you listen to it. That sounds very no. ethereal and odd, but it really is true. You have to kind of um, go with what the f where the footage is taking you. He's able to internalize problems and then come up with solutions, which were his own solutions. And I think that that's you know, a huge, that's about listening and about you know, putting one's ego at the door. It's it's just being as honest as you possibly can to in being as faithful as you possibly can to the thing that's really driving you to tell this story. And for me, it was the human element of it. So that was always the the, the horse that was pulling the cart. And um, I think if yeah, they, it would be dangerous if you sw swap that around and we're just looking to reference a bunch of different time travel movies. But for this, I had I had a, th a theme I had in my head. I had something I really had in my mind. I had something I wanted to say. I had these characters that kind of grew in my head that I cared about, and time travel was a way of, you know, 
this engine that kind of drove the whole thing.